The opening level of Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, has a really understated elegance in its design that I didn't really notice until I tried to analyze it. Thematically, the level is incredibly strong as well. The gentle sway of the camera really sells the effect of being on a pirate ship. The ship itself is quite detailed for a SNES game, even frequently displaying graphic elements in the foreground, but it never muddies the level design or confuses the player. The music is suitably jolly for a first level, though not right away. It starts with a collection of ambient sounds, but as the player moves through the level, the melody kicks in. It's quiet at first, but eventually gets louder and adds more instruments. It's the perfect way to welcome the player to the long adventure that awaits them. But back to the level design. When we start, the screen is empty, aside from Diddy and some bananas on the top. These are actually a clue to a secret that the player can come back and find later, but for now, all the player can do is proceed right. As the player falls from this short ledge, they are eventually confronted with a rat, the game's first enemy. The rat will move toward the player, providing a sense of urgency and forcing them to react. This will almost certainly cause the player to start trying buttons. They might find the jump button and use it to evade or kill the rat, they might find the roll button and use it to defeat the rat. But if they decide not to button mesh, and instead just walk away from the rat, and instead of accidentally cornering themselves, they will instead walk into this little room where they will find a very basic explanation of the game's plot, and a 1-up just to be nice. This first encounter is a masterclass in using the isolation principle to teach the player. It is also fantastic at providing an illusion of danger when, in reality, there is next to none. After the rat, we see our first DK barrel. If the player waits around too long, they notice another rat coming their way, discreetly prompting them to push buttons once again. Once they find the pickup button, the rat may already be mere inches from them and will walk right into the barrel. This little moment teaches the player everything they need to know about DK barrels. They damage foes, and they contain Kongs. Then we find another grabbable object, this crate, with an enemy pacing back and forth, providing a sort of makeshift target practice. It's likely that this banana placement here is all the player will need to entice them to try defeating the enemy, and why not use the crate nearby? By now the player will likely have figured out how to roll, and will try to use it on this rat. But just off screen, there's a second and third rat. When the player rolls into the first, the roll's momentum will cause Diddy to hit the second, which will chain into another roll, and with the third rat, another. The player has now learned that rolling can be chained between enemies, and that it's a powerful two in gaining speed. The two rats immediately after this allows the player to attempt this for themselves if they'd like to. The placement of the rats off-camera is a very smart one. If all three rats were visible at once, the player may get cold feet about rolling and decide to go around them. This is the game gently nudging the player, saying, look, you can do this. Next, the player encounters this letter A, spelled with bananas. I'm willing to bet this has caused 99% of the people who played this stage to press A and doing so puts whatever Kong isn't being controlled on top of the other. Button experimentation in this state will have the player finding out that the roll button now throws the other Kong. Due to the camera panning up, the only object on the screen is this banana coin, likely causing the player to want to collect it. When they find their normal jump isn't high enough, they'll likely try to use the new throw move they just learned, which will net them the coin. Another important gameplay mechanic taught totally wordlessly. Now we come to this depression in the map, with two Kremlings. This section is designed to teach the player to jump over pits, and that most enemies can be killed with a bounce. The player might do this accidentally if they fall at the right time. This enemy bounce technique becomes essential in later levels, and is demonstrated here wonderfully. After some more rats and a DK barrel that may prove helpful to first time players, we find the game's first real secret. As far as they go, it's fairly obvious, but it gets the player thinking about where other secrets may lay in levels to come. If the player ignores this, they are introduced to this barrel Kremlin, whose main attack is pushing the player. Seeing as how it's the first time they're seeing this, the player may be overpowered, but thanks to this conveniently placed secret, they won't be punished with death for doing so. Again, the illusion of danger without the presence of danger. We then get to the most challenging section so far, this tiered barrel stack with Kremlings. The strange box at the top will lure players to climb it, which is a task that is simple, but forces them to think about spacing and timing their attacks. The box contains Rambi, one of the few animal bunnies throughout the game. 
The letter A will once again dare them to press A, and doing so will activate Rambi's charge. This is a gratifying moment for new players, giving them a real sense of power. They'll associate this power trip with Rambi for the rest of their playthrough, demonstrating his value as a power-up. On the left, there's a secret that asks the player once again to use the charge, but if the player sticks around by this wall for too long, rats will drop down and damage them, forcing them off Rambi and demonstrating his Yoshi-like behavior. However, because there are walls on either side of this dip in the map, it is fairly easy to remount. These barrels lead up to a DK coin, the last major collectible in the game. The fact that it is initially off-screen implies that they may not always be in plain sight. After one last group of enemies, the player comes to an unavoidable no Rambi sign, ensuring that they will learn when it does. The final lesson is about the level exit. A player going in blind may try to activate it with a button press or just by walking into it, but these bananas and barrel let them know that they need to jump on it, and they should do it from high up. Overall, this level employs stellar uses of subtle pedagogy. Not once does the player ever feel like their hand is being held, or that they're bogged down with tutorials. The player makes these discoveries themselves, meaning that they retain the info way better than they would through a button diagram. The level is even fun for a more experienced player like myself. It's quite enjoyable to speed through the level, it feels like the developers designed it with that in mind. Even the bonus rooms have a fantastic rhythm to them, like how you can defeat every enemy in this one without even landing. The designers at Rare show a clear understanding of how to use intuitive design to train players. A first level doesn't have to be boring, dull, and hastily designed, and teaching the player can be a fun design challenge instead of a chore.